Hello and welcome to 20 Minute Health Talk. I am your host, Chris Gazuski, and uh, I have a special guest here with us again, a returning guest, uh, Dr. Onesis Steffes, who is uh, the Chief Pharmacy Officer for Northwell Health. Welcome, Dr. Steffes. Great. Thank you very much, Chris, and thank you for having me today. Yeah, uh, you actually came on, I believe it was in January, and you discussed the mRNA vaccines for COVID-19. And today we have some good news. Johnson & Johnson, we have a third vaccine against in this battle against COVID-19. Let's, let's talk about it. Yeah, we're very excited about the addition of uh, the J&J COVID-19 vaccine. I mean, the more manufacturers we have out there, the more vaccines, the quicker we can get people vaccinated and the quicker we can move past this pandemic. So uh, very excited about having this new vaccine on board. Uh, this vaccine also provides additional flexibility and utility as compared to the other vaccines that are currently out there. Uh, so? The J&J vaccine only requires one shot, which is absolutely fantastic. So uh, every dose will go to uh, one person uh, that will get vaccinated to fight against uh, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, the other thing which is really important is that it is shipped and stored uh, refrigerated. Where, as you know, with Pfizer, it's the ultra cold freezer at negative right. 70 and Moderna at negative 20. So this now provides more access in the communities. So physician practices that may not have freezers or independent pharmacies now can all receive this vaccine. So now more and more vaccine can go into the community where people are, which would help increase the vaccination rates. Yeah, even like mobile vans can go into communities and do, you know, do the pop ups, right? Absolutely. And this will really help some of our vulnerable population that can't get to these mass vaccination sites. So the more you go into the community, you work with the community health care workers there, people that they're familiar with. I think the higher number of vaccines uh, will be able to be provided. Yeah. And uh, I know we we spent a lot of time talking about the Pfizer, Moderna, mRNA, you know, which uh, just a quick rehash, you know, provides your body with instructions on how to fight COVID-19 should it enter your body. How does Johnson & Johnson work? Sure. So uh, as you mentioned, the Pfizer Moderna vaccine used mRNA technology. Yeah. And that was new technology that's only been out for a couple of years. But those were the first vaccines that actually, actually approved utilizing mRNA, which sends a message to your cells and instructs them to build the spike protein. What the J&J vaccine uses is called a uh, viral vector. And this type of methodology of delivering vaccines has actually been around since the 70s. So it, it's true. It's been around for a very long time. People are comfortable with it. And basically what it does is it leverages an adenovirus, which is a very similar virus to the common cold. Uh, the good thing is that they actually um, tweak it a little bit where it can't replicate in your body. So you can't get the common cold from getting this vaccine. And inside that adenovirus, is a little piece of the DNA or the genetic material of the coronavirus. So as you get inoculated, um, those adenoviruses uh, enter your cells and then instructs your cells then to um, produce those spike proteins. In a very similar fashion, as you see with the mRNA, your body sees those spike proteins as foreign bodies, builds an immune response to it, and that's how you build the antibodies against the coronavirus. So as a coronavirus enters your body, your, they, your body sees that spike protein and attacks it immediately, which then reduces the chance of it being replicated uh, and reduces the chance of getting the COVID-19 disease. So similar fashion, sees the protein, attacks it. You got um, it. But we're not injecting, and I always want to be clear with this stuff, we're not injecting anybody with COVID. That is correct. There is no COVID. You cannot get COVID from this vaccine. You cannot get the common cold from this vaccine. The side effect profile of this vaccine, of the J&J &J vaccine, is very similar to both Moderna and Pfizer's vaccine. And uh, those were like chills and fever, mm -hmm. potential fever, yeah, soreness. headache, um, pain at the, at the injection site, fever, chills, all self-limiting typically within a day or two. Okay. And, um, you know, you always hear or what we've heard about the Pfizer and Moderna, like that second shot is usually when you hear it, you, you would feel it. This obviously being the first shot. So people who are going to get... Johnson & Johnson's vaccine, they should expect that this there's potential to, to feel these side effects like on the front, from mm -hmm. the shot. Yeah, absolutely. And these side effects are normal. Uh, and honestly, those side effects are showing that you are building that immune response, right? You're building that defense against that spike protein against the coronavirus. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, particularly when it's self-limiting within a day or two. Yeah, I know people who have gotten both uh, rounds of even just Pfizer and Moderna and they, you know, when they felt the side effects, they, their, their response was, I know it's working. Yeah. You know, so I know it's doing something, you're not just yep. injecting me, but uh, there are people who don't have any side effects. 
Um, what is, uh, you know, we know of both Pfizer and Moderna, the efficacy is very high. Mm -hmm. um, what about J&J? &J? So you're going to hear a lot of different numbers thrown out about J&J. &J. When you listen to the news, you're hearing numbers like 67%, 71%, 85%, and sometimes even up to 100%. So if you'd like, I could take a moment and kind of break down those different numbers and kind of what sure. it means. And then ultimately, how does that compare to the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine? So when you initially looked at the numbers, it was 67% effective in um, people not contracting the coronavirus across the whole entire study. And the study for the J&J &J vaccine consisted of um, South Africa, South America, and the United States. When you looked at just the subpopulation of the U.S., it was 71% effective in people not contracting the coronavirus. Uh, then when you take a look at people contracting the virus and having severe uh, COVID, it was about 85% effective. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at everyone that's received the J&J &J vaccine, nobody has been hospitalized or have died from COVID from the vaccine. Oh, that's the key right there. And that is the most important endpoint. You know, the goal is to receive the vaccine to get that level of protection so you don't end up in the hospital and you don't die. So all three vaccines are very uh, equal in efficacy on that specific endpoint. And that's why it's important. Whatever vaccine is available to you, it's important that you take it and you build that level of defense so you don't get hospitalized and, and you don't you don't die. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that. We, we're already seeing headlines of, oh, yeah, it's less effective than the other. And uh, honestly, like you just said, I don't think people can be picky at this point. Like, just get the vaccine and let's end this pandemic. Yeah, the other important thing to note is that um, when you're doing these studies, it's a specific period of time, right? right? This virus now has evolved. It has mutated, right? We've heard about the UK mutation. We've heard about uh, Brazil, South Africa, even potentially one in New York City. So, you know, we don't even know is if, if you did the Moderna and Pfizer studies today, would it be 95%? We point. don't know the answer to that because it's constantly evolving and, and mutating. So that's another important thing. So you really can't compare apples to apples because it's different periods of time in different locations where those studies are done. But once again, the most important thing is that if you take any of these vaccines, uh, you know, you're less likely to go get hospitalized or, or die. And that is the most important thing. You know, a, another common question I get is, you know, um, you know, what vaccine should I get? And, and once again, whatever vaccine is available to you at the time that you can receive the vaccine, it's important to get that vaccine. So if I had an appointment tomorrow, whether it was Pfizer or Moderna or J&J, &J, I would get any one of them and be happy to receive it. Uh, you know, back uh, when I got it, I got Pfizer because that's what happened to be there when I went to the pod to receive my vaccination. So once again, the important thing is to get people vaccinated, to build immunity against this virus, and to reduce the outcome of hospitalization and death. It's really important. Right. Are people going to know which locations offering what? Uh, I'm not really too sure how that's going to transpire, to be honest with you. I mean, back when it was Pfizer and Moderna, we, um, we did not. Uh, but I don't know, you know what the future brings and if there will be information out you know, pertaining to what uh, vaccine. Will be.